Okay, hello everyone. Thank you for coming our presentation. We are a member of Open Chain Japan Working Group. First, <coughs> let us introduce ourselves. Okay. Uh, my name is Yumi Tomita. I'm, uh, I'm a product manager at Cyber Trust Japan, and I'm working on utilizing s forms for vulnerability management. Uh, I'm uh, Norio Kobota from Sony Group Corporation, and uh, I'm a staff of OSPO staff in the whole Sony Group, and uh, Sony representative of Open Chain project. And now uh, leading uh, Open Chain S Bomb Sub Group in Japan community. Thank you. Uh, hello everyone. I am Taishi Yonishima. Uh, I'm a member of NHC's OSPO and uh, uh, working, uh, supporting internal uh, OSS management. And as a committee activity, I am a leader of the OSS Bird Eyed Build and uh, Japan, uh, Open Chain Japan Working Group. Okay, um, this is an agenda today. Uh, we are talking about SBOM initiatives in Japan from the perspective of Open Chain Japan Working Group and Japanese company. First, uh, Yonishima-san explain us what is SBOM and the importance of SBOM for software supply chain. And then uh, he shows us Japanese SBOM trends. Uh, then uh, Kobota-san will introduce about our Open Chain Japan Working Group initiatives and SPDX 3.0. Then lastly, as a future prospect, uh, we are going to talk about how are we currently working on uh, each of our company and how do we deal with uh, operating s -bomb. So please start, Yonishima-san. Uh, thank you, Tomita-san. Uh, in this slide, I'd like to introduce the importance of SBOM, which stands for Software Bill of Materials. SBOM is, as you know, uh, a document that outlines the structure of software components. There are several key points I would like to highlight in this slide. First, SBOM uh, is expected to be utilized in various fields, such as cybersecurity and OSS license management. And in recent years, there has been increasing global interest in SBOM, especially in the United States and Europe. Government in these regions are working to adapt to registration the usage of SBOM and as a result, attention to SBOM is increasing. Following the lead of these regions, expectation for the use of SBOM uh, are growing in Japan as well. And today, based on these recent trends, I would like to give an overview of the current status of SBOM in Japan. As an activity on the ministry side, a Japanese government agency established a task force to promote cybersecurity measures <laughs> and discuss about SBOM and evaluate by POC and publish new guidelines for companies. I would like to make an uh, introduction after this. On the other hand, on the other hand Open Chain is a cross-industry industry community and is very active in Japan. On this point, Kobo-san will explain details after my part. In this, let me introduce the activities of METI, which is a Japanese government agency that continues to study SBOM. In 2019, task force was established at METI to ensure cybersecurity throughout the supply chain. And after executive order 14028 was issued, 
They are still researching and publishing reports on the global situation uh, regarding S bomb. And 2021, a collection of case studies on security measures when using OSS, it's mainly from uh, major Japanese companies, is published. This casebook would be a useful document for many companies to consider the risk of OSS. And in 2022, a proof of concept on SBOM has been conducted. This was an experiment to evaluate the effectiveness of creating the SBOM manually or using free tools or commercial tools to evaluate the effectiveness of SBOM. I think this experiment was a fair assessment of the effectiveness of the S-bomb. And last one, in 2023, a guide on S-bomb was released in July. This guide is mainly for software suppliers and uh, summarizes the benefits of implementation of S-bomb. And in this slide, I will talk to the uh, collaboration with industrial companies. First, I want to highlight the task force that includes experts from industry, uh, academia, and government agency. This group is dedicated to ensure the security and has been working to promote best practices. And second, a case study was published that interviewed 20 major uh, Japanese companies about their efforts to ensure security. This uh, study covers points such as uh, OSS license and vulnerability issues, as well as supply chain risk control, and includes several informative case studies. Uh, regards cybersecurity, Related to medical devices, uh, they are continuing efforts for domestic use based on the IMDRF guideline. And in August uh, 2023, five major Japanese telecommunication company announced that they have been by the agency to conduct a demonstration project for uh, the introduction of S bomb. This is, uh, I think, this is a significant step forward in uh, cross sectional efforts to secure the devices. We think it would be great if this kind of collaboration between government, uh, government agency, and industry uh, could continue in the future. And next, I will ask Kobutsam. Uh, about the Open Chain Initiative in Japan. Please, Kobutsu-san. Okay, thank you, Yoneshima-san, and uh, I'll explain it. Firstly, uh, some of you may know about the Open Chain Project. And the uh, Open Chain Project, you know, uh, maintaining and providing two standards for realizing, creating a reliable and trustable uh, software supply chain from the uh, process management perspective. And the Open Chain project has, is providing, not only providing uh, uh, specifications, but also the, some many education materials and some actual use cases for supporting these two standards. Oh, thank you. And the next is uh, Japan communities. Open Chain Japan Working Group is established by Hitachi, Sony, and Toyota in December 2017, about five years ago. And uh, for sharing the best practices and uh, resolving common issues for open source license compliance in our Japan industry. And now, uh, more than 200 people from 80 companies participating in Japan Working Group, of course, including uh, NEC, uh, Yoneshima-san from NEC, 
and the Cyber Trust Japan, uh, Tomita san is belongs to Cyber Trust Japan. And of course, I belong to Sony Group. And uh, one policy is existing. Uh, we are discussing in Japanese local language, but uh, we output some material in both in English and Japanese. So we can contribute to the global community, Open Chain Project Global Community. And the next is uh, about the SPDX. I'd like to explain uh, the history of regional activities for the SPDX project. In the past years, I, we met some industries members met the uh, hardest situation. <laughs> uh, we sometimes can't receive the uh, OSS license information properly from our suppliers because uh, our suppliers doesn't know about not only the open source license compliance, but also uh, they are not um, familiar with uh, some tools creating and operating open source software. Because and, uh, we, at the same time, we met the SPDX specification and investigate, investigate these specifications. From the license compliance perspective, Full SPDX specification, it includes a bunch of information inside it. Uh, it is very difficult to operate and difficult to understand for our suppliers. So in the past, we promote uh, and collaborate with SPDX project members and uh, we pick up some minimum required elements and uh, contribute to the SPDX project. And uh, now it was merged as a subspecification of SPDX. It's called SPDX Lite. And now SPDX project team are discussing and uh, nearly releasing SPDX version 3.0. And uh, this uh, left top slide is uh, presented at Open Source Summit uh, Europe. Uh, 2023, and this document describes SPDX 3.0 is simple, uh, simple and flexible. I think it is very effective and it is very simple and flexible for when we handled it by uh, some tools or some uh, softwares. But the architecture and is very big change from the uh, previous version. So it doesn't mean uh, everyone can easily understand the specification and easily operate. And uh, from our investigation, compared to version 2.3, the specification is much more complex and much more difficult to understand. So, this is uh, our solution. We uh, at first uh, translate into Japanese uh, several presentation materials presented at the Open Source Summit or SPDX Mini Summit and so on, and share them to the local community, Open Chain Japan, SBOM SG, and Automation SG. And after that, we uh, investigate by engineers uh, to understand the SPDX architecture. Right hand is the actual SPDX model and it translate into Japanese to and for understanding the structure. And we have the local meeting regularly. Uh, I'm not sure, but uh, we, will, we, we, we had the about once every two weeks hybrid. And I'd like to introduce a brief introduction creating our, created our, uh, by us. <coughs> this is a basic to understand the uh, SPDX version 3.0. SPDX uh, previous version is described only tag and value uh, list. But SPDX 3.0 is uh, represented as a class model. So, if you are an engineer, you can understand easily. We need to check 
at first uh, package class, for example. But the package class is inherit uh, abstract class. So we need to check, if we implement the package class into SBOM, we need to check all elements uh, inherit upper class. These are the all elements we needed to implement only in the package class. After that, we created the JSON schema and highlight minimum required element in the SPDX specification. And share, of course, these uh, documents to our community. This is a package class, and this is a relationship class. And so, uh, and we will uh, sh uh, we already share this material uh, on the sched, so you can take this uh, document and you can refer uh, these learning materials from our GitHub repository. And current situation, we collaborate with SPDX Global Community, and the Light Profile website is published uh, two or three days before. And we are now PR, sending a PR to the global community, and the PR is for like profile is in progress now. At conclusion for my part, there are many uh, things we learned, but the two pros and one cons I'd like to introduce. The first pros is sharing knowledge in a local language allows more people to know the specification and more people to participate in discussions. And the second process is having friends. We have all friends in Japan community. So who support you in local language lowers to uh, threshold, lowers threshold to participate in the global community. It's a very good uh, situation. And on the other hand, one concept is existing. It may take longer time reach consensus in local community. So uh, it caused the delay uh, for the global community discussions. So I recommend you, if you do such like uh, community activities, at least the leader should be attending uh, the global community and catch up with the uh, latest uh, specification. Thank you. It's all my part. Next, uh, Tomita-san. Thank you, Koboto-san. Uh, finally, I would like to show you how to work on a bomb in Japanese companies and summarize what the future prospect. Uh, as a member of uh, Open Chain Japan Working Group, uh, we are talking about that. As Yoneshima-san mentioned before, uh, there is currently no law in Japan at, the, at this time, but we are already in a situation to deal with that. So in addition, uh, we uh, specification has been already released by the community, but uh, exactly how to uh, operate uh, the SBOM has not been uh, decided in Japan. So. Uh, let's see how uh, is it operate uh, in the actual uh, Japanese company. So, uh, <coughs> could you explain at NEC? Thank you, Tomita-san. Uh, on this page, I'd like to introduce NEC's governance for open source. First, our OSS governance is divided into three tiers. The first year is a global policy that all employees, including top management and uh, non-developers, non-developer roles, uh, as well as uh, must understand. This policy is a simple one-page summary of our basic stance on OSS emphasizing the importance of compliance with OSS-related laws and regulations and respect for the OSS community. Then, middle and low documents exist to ensure compliance with this top policy. 
The second tier is a set of guidelines aimed primarily at managers and middle-level employees and contain specific ways to consider and utilize OSS. Finally, the most detailed tier consists of, uh, consists of documents that outline processes such as specific OSS risk assessment, uh, assessment methods for uh, methods and support measures and validation process with tools. My point in this page is while the use of OSS uh, requires close attention to risk, establishing a development process can sometimes be complicated. Therefore, creating such a hierarchical document may help to improve internal understanding. And I also think the point is both bottom-up and top-down approach are effective in promoting the concept among employees. And next, I recommend for SBOM-related efforts in this slide. First, we need to promote guidelines regarding SBOM. It is necessary to harmonize with the existing PSAT processes and the processes when utilizing OSS. I suggest a small start will be better. Uh, PSAT, stands, uh, PSAT stands for Product Security and Incident Response Team. PIT is a team responsible for security response to the company's products. Second is education, such as an e-learning. In our case, we provided mandatory e-learning for uh, entire company. We educated all employees on global, uh, all employees on general knowledge of OSS and SBOM. And now I look back on it as an effective education. And uh, there were some unfavorable um, reactions in our case. But I think it is important to educate while accepting such reactions. As the end of my message, uh, we consider the response that companies should take. The situation remains unchanged and it is difficult to draw conclusion, but Let's keep a close eye on developments and take an action. The one step is to create your own SBOM. Also, the initial, co initial cost is high. The implementation of the tool is practically essential for risk mitigation. And second, let's also make sure that living processes, not just engineering tools, is an ongoing challenge. And the situation of receiving the SBOM from external resources should also be considered. First, we should focus on the point that SBOM is machine readable and aim to systematize the mechanism to identify OSS components and collect vulnerability information from SBOM. I would also like to emphasize the importance of corpora uh, cooperation with PSAT team. Uh, okay, so uh, there was a recommendation from NEC. Thank you very much for listening to. Uh, next, please introduce uh, CyberTrust Japan. Tomi-san, please. Okay. Um, I'll talk about CyberTrust Japan. Uh, Cybertrust Japan is in the open source based business, certification business, and IoT security business. So it is heavily involved in open source supply chain security. So uh, we are participating in the uh, OpenSSF since 2021. 
OpenSSF uh, is uh, <coughs> under the Linux Foundation, and uh, OpenSSF is a project that aims to improve open source software security. So I will show you how we are working on SBOM from the perspective of open uh, per perspective of the company uh, participating in open SSF. 2022, three overall goals of the project and 10 mobilization plan for this open source of the security have been agreed. Cybertro Japan has uh, focused on three of these uh, 10 mobilization plans, uh, which, is, uh, which are relevant to our business and has been contributing them since last year. We have created task teams under the leadership of OSPO. Then we chose three projects, uh, Digital Signatures, SBOM Everywhere, and uh, Improved Software Supply Chains. And based on the contributions to these uh, open source project, uh, we are implementing our uh, in our systems, like uh, creating S bombs uh, and educate for employees, and we share use cases like in the open chain Japan communities. For SBOM operations, we are implementing SBOM generation tools into our own supply chain and creating use cases. Uh, after, in this afternoon, we have a session about that, so if you are interested in, uh, you, you can uh, see this, listen to this uh, session. So, and, uh, one thing we can learn from our activity is uh, based on this open SSF mobilization plan for OSS supply chain security, we can work on improvement with the entire software supply chain in mind. So although this is uh, like a project by project effort, but uh, we will, in the future, we will work to connect each project and deepen the collaboration between the OpenSSF and OpenChain, or uh, SDDX project. For, exa for example, it could be uh, S -bomb, uh, signature, digital signatures on s -bombs or uh, s -bombs for vulnerability management. Uh, that's all about CyberTrust Japan initiatives. Uh, as we have seen the examples of NEC and CyberTrust Japan, and, uh, and also Sony. Uh, <laughs> companies you. have already begun to implement SBOM in Japan. Uh, it's important not only to keep the experience in each company, but also to make it deep and collaborate with government, industry, and the community. Uh, and I would say, it's the same as between communities like OpenSSF and OpenChain project. Then currently, the community is creating specifications such as uh, SPDX light profile, while government is conducting demonstrations and other experiments, and developing laws or regulations. And for those who actually create the SBOMs, uh, we think uh, one of the main motivations of creating SBOM is because the laws and regulations. So we, we believe that if we cooperate more deep in and make it uh, make the operation policy easier in Japan uh, for Japanese companies to understand, it will be it will lead to more spread uh, of SBOM. SBOM utilizing. And this is what the Open Chain Japan uh, Working Group, Open Chain Project, will be working on in the future. Uh, first of all, we will create educational materials. As Kobota-san uh, explained earlier, uh, 
we we making we are making SPDX three O materials, and uh, so we can work to help people uh, to understand the specification. And next, we will share the use cases. Um, uh, we will share the use cases within the community to understand issues and solutions uh, to operating s uh, just as we shared how we are operating within our company this time. And then we collaborate with government, industry, and other communities. Uh, we believe that by sharing what we have gained from our activities with communities, like and um, and cooperating with them, we will be able to sort out operational issues and and make operations more in line with actual conditions. So we would like to focus on these activities in the future. Lastly, uh, the two things we want you to do is uh, are please join us and please collaborate with Open Chain Working Group, Open Chain Project. Uh, that's all for our presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So, does anyone has questions? Um, thank you very much. It's a very good speech. And I have a question regarding this uh, SPDX light. Okay. When you define this um, element for this SPDX light, yeah. this yellow part, ah, yes. um, is all these yellow fields can be generated by the current commercial scanning tool by default? Uh, no. Uh, firstly, we checked the, uh, our requirement from the license compliance. So we need a concluded license, uh, yeah. de declared license, and check the, it mandatory. And from the SPDX uh, specification itself, requires us uh, some uh, elements are already uh, required elements. So we created the JSON file, JSON schema file by manually <laughs> and using uh, some tools to visualize these uh, figures. It's the, these figures are created by manually, sorry. Uh, but of course we are using some tools. So in the future with this SDX light will become can, uh, uh, what we think at now, uh, now is uh, we contributed SPDX light profile to the SPDX community. After that, we create the uh, how to say process management in the open chain specification. If you are using this light profile in the, some specific industry, you need to do this, do, do this. And you need to provide light profile, and you need to append and combine with a security profile, and so on. This is the, uh, some process management guideline. It will be provided from the open chain project, I think. Okay, I see. So it's like uh, mm, this work group have the proposal for this SPDX light, and then become to the open chain specification, yes. and then the market commercial tool will according to this specification and build their tooling to uh, support it is for automation, maybe. Uh, yes, I okay. think so. But uh, at this moment, it's a uh, local community activities, so we needed to ask Shane. Okay. <laughs> this, I this see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, question for the S bomb. In this moment, we have two um, formats. We have SPDX and we have Cyclone DX. 
Uh, how did you decide on using SPDX, and <laughs> how, how can you incorporate uh, Cyclone DX information that would, will come from a software provider? Uh, yes, uh, we think uh, both <coughs> specification is good, and the company person uh, select which uh, specification, but we are now active uh, in uh, take an initiative in the Linux Foundation project, so we uh, collaborate with SPDX project. But of course, we are joined Cyclone DX community and uh, learn the specification from the uh, website or Slack and so on. So, but uh, at this moment, we don't have the colleagues in our community who is uh, well uh, know and uh, understand Cyclone DX specification well, so we need to more uh, colleagues to the community. Okay, makes sense? Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentations. And uh, I have one question relating to the, how to say, the previous question. So according to the discussion between the Mary san and the Koboto san, uh, so they, uh, you argued about this, some kind of specification uh, in the open chain. Uh, sorry, sorry, I, I, uh, I, have a, I have a mistake. Uh, we will create the guideline. It's not specification. Okay. Uh, in the context of the open chain? Uh, yes, ah. I think so. So the, on the other hand, the s bomb specification would be uh, formalized in the SPDX, SPDX workgroup. Yes, right. Okay. Like. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, so the yeah, I think uh, the the light profile, uh, the SPDX like the, in, in the SPDX uh, two point oh. Uh, uh, version two is a, a great contribution to the especially the, the industries, actual industries. So, and uh, I think the, the light profile for the SPDX 3.0 uh, is uh, also the, the very good way to bridge uh, uh, between the SPDX uh, version two and uh, 3.0. Yeah, that, that's a, uh, yeah. It's a yeah uh, model uh, from model perspective. It's uh, there should be great. Uh, so the, the from the the uh, serialization perspective. So the yeah it's uh, SPDX Lite is uh, the very e easy to uh, write describe uh, the S bomb and uh, to use their uh, chug value text format or XLS uh, Excel format. Uh, so, but uh, uh, SPDX uh, 3.0 uh, is uh, the uh, uh, to, is uh, a little difficult to uh, the dis describe uh, the in such as uh, as the easy format. So, but uh, yeah, I think I want <laughs> the, 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 the my uh, the uh, tiny idea. So, the if the uh, only using using the vocabulary of the this the light profile. Uh, and the uh, SPDX 3 wall may be able to the, write the, the uh, more simple <laughs> like <laughs> serial format. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, the, yeah we, uh, we are so, now yeah. discussing, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, yeah. Uh, uh, it it can be the another uh, the very good bridge way bridging mm -hmm. way to the uh, the move to the more <laughs> okay. yeah. uh, practical, uh, yeah, uh, as from the yeah, uh, distribution or uh, the, yeah, utilizing the HM. So the, yeah, I I the want to see the yeah uh, the such progress, <laughs> and uh, I uh, I I yeah, I'd like to the if if possible, so uh, contribute something. <laughs> yes. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. It's a time? Okay, it's a time to finish. Oh, thank you very much. Andrew. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>